Hi, I'm Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio. Uh, today I'm going to show you a quick project, a quick sewing project. Um, I'm going to be really busy at work the next couple of weeks and I don't think I'm going to have time to uh, put a quilt on the machine and get anywhere with it. So I'm going to do a couple of short videos here for the next couple of weeks. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a folder and this is for um, this folder is going to be to hold my watercolor paper. Uh, I've been learning how to watercolor for the last two years and um, I find that I really need to paint as often as I can. Every day would be great but I don't get the opportunity to do that. Um, but I need something to carry, hold my sheets of paper. What I do is I buy a large sheet of cotton paper and I cut it into um, small usable pieces like this and um, then I watercolor on these. I tape them down to a clipboard and I watercolor on them. So I need something to keep these in. Right now I just have them stacked in a bin and um, even though it's been okay so far I'm worried about them getting dirty. So I'm going to uh, make a folder for them and be able to put them in my bookcase. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to make this folder. And the purpose of this is to give you an idea of how to do this so that you can make a folder any size that you want to and put whatever you want to in it. So I'm going to adjust the camera and I'm going to show you the materials and then we'll get into the step-by-step -step instructions. Here is the first um, folder that I made. Uh, this is serged around the edges and then it has an elastic band that secures it closed and then we have a button here and what that button does is keeps this elastic from pulling through the eyelet. It has an eyelet here in the center. So when you open it up I've got two pockets, one on each side and then I can put my papers in here and keep them secure. And then on the inside I have a button tied to some round elastic that feeds through the eyelet and that button keeps it from pulling through just folds in half and then you just pull the elastic around and then this button here will keep this elastic from pulling through on the inside. So I want to show you how um, to make one of these. Um, this one is um, a little bit smaller than the one I'm going to make. I'm going to make it a little bit larger. This one is like eight and a quarter by twelve and a half inches, something like that. I'm going to make this next one, it's going to be 9 by 13. So I have a piece of Peltex, which is my stabilizer. This is the 72F, which is fusible on both sides. Um, you can get it with fusible on just one side, or you can do the sew in, whichever kind you want to do. Then I need two pieces of fabric. Uh, the same size as the Peltex and one's going to go on the inside and one's going to go on the outside and I'm just using these two pieces. They're cut from the same piece of fabric, a piece of hand dyed that I made a couple years ago and I'm going to use the one on the inside, one on the outside and then <clears throat> to make these flaps these squares are 9 by 9 inches and they're going to get folded in half after I fuse some interfacing to it. Now I prefer to use a medium weight fusible interfacing but I was out of the medium weight so this is a light weight. Um, you just want something that's going to give it a little extra body and so we're going to fuse that on there and then we'll be folding the pockets in half and they will go over here. Now if you don't want the pockets as deep as these you can make these pockets a little bit smaller like try 9 by 8 and then you'll have um, l less room here. More of your paper will s show out but you won't have as much here. That's up to you. These pockets don't have to be this deep. And you can use this for any kind of project. It doesn't have to be uh, for s storing your watercolor paper. It can be for uh, like if you want to save postcards that you've received you can put those in there. Uh, greeting cards, you can put your kids report cards in there. Um, this will hold eight and a half by eleven sheets of paper if you fold them in half you can do that. Um, there's just uh, an unlimited number of things you can do with this. So first thing I'm going to do is to fuse the fabric onto the Peltex and so I need to decide 
what side I want is the right side and the wrong and I'm going to use this as my right side so that's going to go down this direction and I'm going to have to sandwich the two together because this does have fusible on both sides so I'm going to layer all of this down and line it up the best you can, I can. Now you can always make your fabric larger than your Peltex. It doesn't have to be the exact same size. And then we'll put this piece down. And the directions will come with the Peltex as to how to fuse this down. Uh, the Peltex I bought came on a bolt and it, you can buy it in the interfacing sections of the fabric store. And um, since it comes on a bolt, it may have um, kind of a, a crease in it or a, um, it'll just be kind of rounded and it'll want to round up because it is on a bolt. But um, as soon as you start ironing it, that crease or that um, lump on it will come out. Like it was up, raised a little bit on this side and that's now flat. So I'm going to go and steam it on this side. And get that all nice and secured down. Now you don't have to quilt these if you don't want to. The Peltex will keep it um, secure on there with the fusible. But I'm going to go ahead and quilt this. And I'm just going to use some straight lines because I'm going to quilt this on my domestic sewing machine. And I am not proficient at quilting on that machine. I am proficient on my long arm, but not on my domestic sewing machine. So I'm just going to quilt some straight lines. And um, then we'll put the pockets on. Well, let's go ahead and fuse the interfacing to these pieces. So do the same thing and decide which is your right and which is your wrong side. And this is another hand dyed fabric, so it's really not going to matter. And I'm going to put my interfacing on. And then I'm going to fuse this from the fabric side. So um, I think it works just a little bit better. And you can cut your interfacing a little bit smaller, like a quarter of an inch all the way around, a little bit smaller than your fabric if you want to. That way you're certain that you don't have any fusible showing and it won't stick to your iron. But that's all nice and fused. I'll do the same with this one. Okay, so both pieces are fused. And now I'll fold it in half. And we could do it that way or we could do it this way. I'm going to do this way so all the colors will show. Okay. My next step will be to do my quilting and then we'll assemble this all together. Now to quilt through the Peltex, what you want to do is use a heavier needle than what you may normally use. So I have um, some Schmitz needles here and um, these are just universal needles and what you want to use is the 9014 needle. You don't want to use the 7010 or the 8012. You want to use the 9014. And this is a package that has uh, three different sizes in it. It only comes with one 9014 needle in it. But you can buy them in sets where you can get all one size in there if you, if you look for them. This package here, this is an um, embroidery needle. And I have um, three 7511s and two 9014. So, um, the embroidery needle will work fine. It has, it'll have a bigger eye, I believe. Um, and then the universal needles will work too. As long as they're a 9014, you want a little bit heavier needle for this project. 
and then for the thread you can use any color thread you want you can make it um, blend in with your fabric or you can make it contrasting and I haven't quite picked out a thread yet I'm going to use this lime green I currently have orange on the machine before for this one I used the orange and on this one I used um, a meander stitch or a serpentine stitch on it for the quilting ready to go I just need to decide which I want for the front and the back I'm going to use this, this on the front and I'm going to go ahead and um, quilt it and on this one I'm going to quilt on this piece I'm going to quilt this direction because this is the pattern it's you can see the kind of their stripes in there and they go horizontally whereas this pattern uh, there really was no direction to this pattern it's a modeled fabric so um, it didn't really matter which direction I went on this one so I just went the short way and then I did a serpentine stitch so on this one I'm going to do it horizontally and I'm going to use a straight stitch and I'm just using my regular regular presser foot nothing special on this if you have a walking foot you can use that but since this this is all fused together you're not going to have the problem with you know your bottom fabric moving faster than your top fabric you're not going to have that so it's really not necessary but you certainly can use it if you want And then I'm going to check my stitches and make sure they look okay. Um, and they look fine. So I'm just going to keep on stitching and get this quilting done. Now this doesn't require a lot of quilting because you really don't need to hold anything together with your quilting. So I'm just uh, spacing this out according to the pattern. And this, there isn't an even amount of distance between each of these lines. I've got them a little closer over here. Um, I was going to follow these stripes here but this is a wider area so I decided to throw one in there and I'm going to do another one over here and then one close to the edge so I'm going to turn it this way if you run out of space the harp space here um, you just turn it the other direction or you can roll this this will roll up it's just a little stiff okay one more line I'm going to do one more closer to the edge and then I'll trim threads and we'll move on to the next step okay now we're all quilted and um, this is the right side and if you want to you can go ahead and you can trim this up on your uh, cutting board and uh, make everything nice and smooth um, I think this is going to be okay and I'm going to go ahead and uh, secure the pockets on so we're going to just lay those in place And then now I need to serge all this so I can pin this or I can clip it um, I can glue it glue the edges down and I think right now my clips are upstairs so I will use my pins and just pin this down and if your pockets are a little bit longer you can trim those too and I think I will trim this just a little bit There we go, it's a better fit. And 
and it's not going to take many pins just pin it uh, put two pins in and that should hold it and you don't have to go all the way through your peltex because that may be a little difficult to do you're going to need really sharp pins to do this too so that is the pinned that one's pinned down and <coughs> And the second one over here, I'm going to uh, glue this one down because I'll just give you a different, show you a different way to do this. So I'm going to just put a line of glue, and this is just kids' school glue. And I'll just put this down. And then I'll heat it with an iron. Now this works best if you use a dry iron. If you use a, since this is water-soluble glue, using steam can just make it raise up and not hold so and when you put your pockets down make sure you have the fold to the inside my little flap keeps popping up this flap is uh, over the hole where you install the water for the steam and when my iron gets warm that rubber stopper in there seems to soften up and it releases so it's there's kind of an issue with this iron so I am in the market for a new iron okay I'm going to take this to my serger and I'm going to serge all the way around and um, next thing I'll have to do after that is to put in the eyelet that is here put in the eyelet and then the elastic system and it'll be done so I will be right back as soon as I get the serge. Now, if you don't have a serger, you could also use a zigzag. You don't have to use a serger. Just, just do a zigzag on there. Okay, I have the edges all serged. And um, I have these tails here. I'm just going to thread them through the stitching in the serger. The serger stitching here. And um, now I've got my pockets. You can see comparison in size. This is about half an inch larger, so um, that may, I'm hoping that'll give me a little bit more room for my paper. Um, this paper fits in here okay, is just a little tight, and I can't get any more than this, which it isn't bad. I've got six sheets on each side, so that isn't bad, but um, I'd like to get a little bit more in there if I can. Um, but if that doesn't work, it's not a bad thing because I can always just uh, make more of these so okay I'm going to um, go ahead and take care of these tails and then I'll show you how I'm going to put in the eyelet um, and also if you haven't done this before to do the to hide these I just put a small crochet hook through here and then I loop the thread through the serger thread and then I do my best to pull this through it takes a little doing this crochet hook I'm using right now has a very small hook on it so it makes it a little difficult to grab it and pull it through and then the serger thread wants to bunch up so you have to work at it a little bit to uh, get it all to come through but just take your time and be patient and it will You'll get it all in. The next thing I need to do is to find the center here for my eyelet and I'm going to pick an eyelet color. I have this jar that's full of different colors and I have this is a hole punch and I have these here also and I think I think this green will work these were given to me by a friend who had done a lot of paper crafting and then decided to stop paper crafting and so she gave me all of these and I am using them for um, sewing projects so I need to find the center so I'm going to fold this in half and press it down and then I need to get my ruler and 
uh, since it's nine inches, I need to find four and a half, and then I'll just mark that with a fabric pen. Just make sure I've got it, my ruler, in the right spot. There we go, and then four and a half. And just put a little dot. Now, my hole punch, this, this is a very old leather punch is what this is. This is, I have no idea how old this is. This, this is something else that I got out of an estate sale. So it's extremely old. You can still buy them like this now. Um, they usually have better grippers on the handle than these. These have, these are just metal all the way to the end. There's no rubber on them. But what I want to do is to fold this in half again. And where my dot is, then I want to cut. Now you rotate this wheel to get the size hole that you need for your eyelet. And the way to test that, I have done tests on pieces of Peltex and found that this uh, post um, makes the right size hole. So I'm going to fold this in half and see where my mark is. And I'm going to put this about halfway in and then I'm going to squeeze and then it punched a hole in there. And you may come up like this where it didn't punch all the way through. So I'm just gonna take my scissors and snip that off. And then test your eyelet to make sure it will go through. And I want my eyelet on this side. I want the, oh, there it goes. I want the flat side on my outside. And now to close this, this is another old tool but this is the thing that you use to secure it's like a hole punch only you put your eyelet on there and squeeze and that it rounds that over of course I can't get in there so what I'm going to do is to use um, my hand punch hold it here and then hammer it I've got a hammer and um, this works best if I put this on my um, concrete floor. If I put it on here, it's not going to work. There's just too much give in this table. This is uh, just an aluminum um, ironing board. And I have another metal table, but that's the same thing. You're going to have give. So if you put it on a wood, piece of wood, um, you may need to put it over like the leg where you need something very solid. You need something that's not going to give. So I'm going to put this on my concrete floor and just hit it a couple times with my hammer gently and it'll round that over. So I will show you what that looks like here in just a second. Okay, my eyelid is secure in there. And I put the finished side on the outside because that's one that's going to show. Now I need to get my elastic and measure that out. And I have a package of colored craft elastic. This is called Stretch Lace and it's by Crafter Square. I'm going to use the green. Um, you can use just regular white or um, black el round elastic that uh, is used for sewing. That works just fine. It's a little bit heavier than this. This is a lightweight um, elastic. And I need to cut a piece that is the same length of my book plus a couple of extra inches. So I've got about three extra inches and I'm going to cut it here. And then I'm going to need two buttons or one button and a charm. What you need is something to keep your elastic from pulling through because it could pull through this direction or this direction if you don't have something on that elastic. So you need to make sure you've got um, something on both sides. So I have a button on this side and a button on that side. So I am going to um, go through my buttons. Okay, so the button that's going on the outside, I'm going to put that on first 
and I'm going to thread through the bottom in one hole. So I threaded it from the bottom to the top in one hole and then from the top to the bottom in the other. And then I'm going to kind of even this up and then I'm going to thread this from the front to the inside. And now I'm going to thread this button on. And I just need to use two holes, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go through the back to the front on both of these now, but I'm going to go across. This button has four holes, but I'm only going to use two, and if you can see there, I went across instead of side by side I went across and now I'm going to just double check and make sure I have enough room and if it's a little bit shorter that's fine because it's elastic it'll stretch so now I'm just going to tie a knot I can get my fingers to work for me. I'm starting to get cold, and when I get cold, my I lose my fine motor skills. My fingers don't want to work right. Okay, so I got that on, and then I'm going to tighten that knot down. Okay, I want to make sure that will close. Yeah, that's plenty of elastic. And then we have that little button on the outside. Okay, so I'm going to tighten this up a little bit more and make sure everything is secure. There we go. And now I'm going to trim these ends off a little bit. They don't need to be standing out that far. And now I can put my papers in and I'm going to show you the difference in the sizes. Um, you can see about, about a half an inch on that edge and about a quarter inch on this edge. So let's see how this works. Is this paper is really pretty snug in there. And I have two types of paper. They're both cotton papers, but they're two different brands. Um, I think this one is cotton. This is, uh, I think, Hanson. And then this is Arches. Arches is the one I like the best, but um, I have several different kinds. So yeah, that does go in smoother. It just needed a little extra space, so um, that's why I made it, made it a little bit bigger. So here we go. There is, there's the larger one. This is the smaller one. And you can adjust your buttons to wherever you want. There we go. So two different sizes. So just um, you know, measure whatever you're wanting to put in these, and um, adjust your measurements as you need to. Make them smaller or larger. And uh, I hope you find some use for these. So I thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. And please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and subscribe if you'd like. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. For more quilting ideas, click on the video links. And to keep up with my newest projects, click on the subscribe button. I hope to see you again soon.